welcome to the Peter H channel. Now, if you're watching this, it means that what I did was a success. And I think it will be a success, so you're probably watching this, and that's very good. But when I noticed what I'm about to uh, display, I'm only making this video because this is going to be like the biggest engineering repair I've ever done. This is such a serious thing that it had me really perplexed for a while. This thing to me would be quite, was quite unusual at the time. But anyway, let's see if we can make a video out of this. So this damage has been caused because you just remove the stator plate and you see this seal and someone has thought, oh, I can change the seal without take, splitting the cases. And someone has dug a screwdriver in here and a screwdriver in here and tried to pull it out. So this is that's why you've got to have something like masking tape over the end of a screwdriver, even when you do it like, you know, like this, one handed, like for the sake of your camera. Let's have a look at this. If I take this over to the window, I can get a highlight condition. Okay, so just to just to illustrate how serious that gouge is, if I take this to the window, you will see that between three and four o'clock you can see daylight that's daylight through there that's not that's not a glint it's actually you know it's not reflecting off anything that's daylight through there you know i promise you that it's not like i could go and buy a new left hand case and that's why this is this is why i was so worried and upset about this you know this is going to be the most crucial repair i've ever done So as I magnify it, it looks even worse. You know, I'm in low light conditions here, which is a bit of a bugger. But look at that. You can actually see the pattern of the screwdriver. I wonder what will happen if I try and put a magnifying glass over this. How scary is that? For anyone, I mean, who, who the hell did that? And what are they thinking? So no metal has actually been removed here and it's it's kind of piled it up. So I've got to take that off. I mean this is a bit this is the seal surface for goodness sake. I'm going to try and use a very recommend, highly recommended filler. Try and fill this and sand it, but sanding it is so tricky because if you don't sand it to the profile of the, the seal, you're just going to make it worse. Oh, it don't look like nothing at the moment, but this is the trickiest repair I've ever done, and certainly the most crucial. Looks like nothing, but this is a serious. It's serious. It's got to be prepared properly. It's got to be sanded properly. It's got to be flawless. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna, gonna get on with it. So the first thing I've done was make a 44 millimeter diameter cardboard cutout, which I cut into a manageable piece that you could hold with an idea of, of making this a bit thicker, probably the same thickness as the thing about five millimeters thick and so that way when you hold sanding it's just another form of grinding and if you grind you know even a little bit off this seal surface the seal is never going to is not going to seal right I mean I will never say never you might be able to get it back but if you just went in there with your finger you'd have a finger shaped groove so 
by making this the same the radiuses are the same so I know no matter what angle as long as I've got the surface area there I know that my radius is the same I'm going to do my best not to create any dips or grooves all I'm trying to do with this first I haven't got any I haven't got any sandpaper on there at the moment this is I'm going to make this up a little bit thicker probably five or six millimeters thick and then put some very uh, light grit sort of I've got some 3000 grit I might try that a little bit just to make sure I'm taking the ridges off because it's got these these drivers have gone in like snow plows and they've they've made surfaces higher than the ceiling area the ceiling surface there are ridges on there as well as gouges as gouges and ridges but no I'm going to grind some material off I'm not going to grind the actual seal face off just I'm just making sure this idea will work this is it's not straightforward this is not an easy repair like I said this is the hardest repair I think I've ever done this is the sort of repair where people would say this is ruined this is written off this is trash this should be melted down for beer cans you know this is really serious now my cutting of the cardboard wasn't that good I'm just seeing you know I can feel the ridges so I'm going to use something like 3000 grit paper and I want to see those ridges shining where they're coming down and I don't want to see the ceiling surface shining because that's going to make it worse in fact this whole thing is horrible I can't believe it this is so serious the first thing I've come up with is wow high off the fumes man this is just Bostic impact uh, contact adhesive and it's whew, close quarters anyway it's enough of that made some more discs cut them into little quarters bit bigger than quarters whatever's manageable and this is comfortable for me it's like a quarter circle i suppose is a technical term for that i've only got 1200 grit sandpaper or wet and dry so i'm not going to do much rubbing but I just want to see whether that's going to take out the the high ridges on the ceiling face. This is just before, well I've actually given it one or two passes with the contraption, the sanding contraption I made. But this is the worst one. It's already gouged. But I just don't fancy using a file in case I slip and remove unnecessary I don't think the wet and dry is going to take a lot and this is the this is the worst bit this is where I've got to get into it and that's got to be brought right down then I can feel the gouge so it's going to take a bit of time Oops, I'm going to take some time. It's difficult to film it and do this, but this is what I'm doing. I'm going to do it two handed now. Well, I've been sanding it now with a wet and dry 1200 grit. I think it's reduced, reduced the height of these by about 50%. They're nearly, nearly flush. The trouble is, it's, it is taking some of the ceiling face as well and with a magnifying glass this one is a bit worse than I thought but these two have come down a lot so I'm going to continue with that can't really film it from this angle so let's try filming it from this angle I mean that's all it's needing I mean, we're dealing with very small quantities So I know that the profile is the right size and the, sh the right shape. You can feel those ridges in there. I 
think this is going to work. Trouble is, when you do that, you can feel the gouges, and you know, I think that's going to work. It's a question of how high that one is there. Do you know, that's really reduced. See if I can get magnifying glass on it. It'll help you see the shiser, the height. Well. well, it's definitely not as high as it was. And in fact, I'm finding it hard to get my thumbnail on it. It is still there. But it's a lot less than it was. So I'm just going to rub that a little bit more. Well, so far, considering the situation, I've got to say I'm really pleased with that. It's down, it's now down to just about 10% of what it was. So like 90% of the, the snowplow ridging is gone. It's just, this is very tricky. It's, to me, it seems to have sort of taken away some of the ceiling surface. There's just a little tiny, tiny amount. These are going to be easier to fill now. Once I've got these clean, and cleaning them is going to be hard. But look at that, you can see the, see the pattern of the screwdriver or whatever it was. I'm going to just do a sort of few more swipes. I don't know what to call it. A few more wipes with the sandpaper there in the, in the little jig thing that we made. And then I'm going to put the seal in and see if I can still see light through it because it might have been it might have been the fact that there was a ridge here that was pushing the seal off the face. It's certainly a lot smoother. I mean, you can obviously feel those gouges because they're gouges but doesn't seem to be a, a place where the light could get all the way through because here there are two gouges and they seem to be separated and that one doesn't go all the way through and neither does that one That's looking pretty good actually. Now all I've got to do is fill those gouges. However, if you just put the seal level with the uh, top lip there, where I've marked it, um, you should see some light. Now, I've lost a little thing, my blackout, my blank out. I'll use a big one. It's not gonna be quite, quite as dramatic. Yeah, just caught a glimpse of it. There you go. Right in, in front of where my black mark is, or my Sharpie mark, you can see the light sticking through there, through the seal. But if you replace, if you dip the seal down, there is no light coming through where that black mark is. And that's what it's all about. A stainless steel brush, this is. I'm using Wings brake and clutch cleaner. as I can get it to be honest. Oh, I'm high again. 
high again. Whoa. Brake cleaner and a stainless steel brush. I'm going to let that dry while I mix up the JB Weld. You can see from the front it's got a pricker for undoing it, so that's nice. already some pressure in the packet. I mean I don't need much more than that, to be honest. A pea sized amount to start with. I've got several ideas about where I can use this. Alright so that's my steel, my steel granules, my ground steel. Let's see if we get a, a similar reaction. Oh, I'm not going to get a similar reaction if I don't open it am I? Much slower. Hardener. I'm actually having to squeeze this one. Oh, should have weighed it really for maximum efficiency. Because there might be too much hardener going on here. Come on, bugger. Should have weighed it. Well, very clever, was it? Oh, I've got a nice consistency there. Didn't want it too runny. the seal through and a lot of the muck has come out so it's been dry now for about half an hour so I'm pretty confident it's not going to seep uh, due to gravity the one on the left uh, let's say there's three one large one on the right one in the middle and one on the left the one on the left does look like the weakest repair the other two look really rather good especially from the other angle if it if it does require another coat then so be it we can I can reposition the case so that gravity works on that third one like it has done on those other two it looks a lot worse in this picture actually that if you get level with it, there's actually a sort of sweating film that does go right over the... Uh, still looks like a trough in that picture, but it, it, it really isn't. Really quite pleased with it. Anyway, the proof of the pudding will be in the testing because if the engine still don't start, then we'll know it hasn't worked properly. 
and it's worked in two of the locations. I think gravity might be having something to do with that top one, which I knew was the worst of the troughs. So if this doesn't work, and I'll know tomorrow whether it's worked, you know, if it's still see light for it, or if it's, you know, obviously still a dip, I can always put a bit more in there and reposition the casting so that gravity is going to work in its favor. The whole thing had been out of focus. I mean, it does look like that hasn't really worked, but these other two have worked. It does look like it's it's showing a bit of a dip in there. The thing is fluid, that's the trouble. So it's gravity working against there, and it's working with there. So it's the next day now, and I've put the seal in. I uh, made it flush with a straight edge across even though it, it does look like it's gone in a bit further I think there's a lip on the edge of the seal that actually makes the seal look like it's actually dipped in further but there's because there's a little edge it's actually the edge that's flush with the shoulder anyway I know it's in the right place because the oil channel lubrication gully channel is not obscured by the seal There's still some clearance just under it. Probably not clear as usual. But that seal, seal goes round there. Literally looks like it's cut out of the seal, but I don't know if that's an optical effect. It's because the seal is actually under that. I don't know how that's happened. How is that optical effect achieved? It's because the seal is under the gully, it must be. Anyway, so it's definitely not obscured. And uh, it's rather a crude test. You know, can you see light through your seal? Which is a, you know, it just shows how crude this situation was. But I'm pretty certain we're not going to see anything. If we do, I'm going to have to... And, and that... That's all I can hope for, really, because, I mean, if you can't see light, you're going to hope it's airtight. Anyway, let's whip that seal out there and just ha and have a look at what it looks like, the repair. So these are the, re the repairs. I mean, if it's working, I don't want to fix it anymore. Do you know what I mean? It looks like to me that, that you could put a little bit more in there. But I just, if it's working, let's not do that. And these are all working. It's that one there that's going to cause any problem. Because you can see. If, you, if the camera's in focus, you'd be able to see. Come on, camera, get it, get it together, camera. Oops. I don't, it doesn't feel like that much of a groove, and it would require me to, to clean it and prep it. And it might make it worse, because at the moment I've got one solid piece in there, and it seems to be light type, which is all I can ask for, really. It's just going to have to be one of those little battle scars that that motors this age pick up. I think a new seal is going to be even more effective at filling that. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the depth of that is. It looks like it's about maybe, oh, I don't know. 0.2 of a millimetre, perhaps. I'm going to put the seal in and test it one more time. I 
I'm doing a light test. And my point is, if it was running before with, it must have been in that condition, although the seal could have been pressed in further. And that, if you press it in further, it's going to starve the bearing of oil. Although the, the bearing did look starved of oil, it did look rusty. But the fact is, if it was running before, and there's now no light coming through, it's got to be better. I mean, it weren't running very well, obviously. It's just, um, that's one of those things. That's why you're only going to see this video after it's running, because then I'm going to know, because otherwise, if it doesn't start, it's a bit sneaky in a way, but not in another way, because there's too much riding on this. Well, here's some stop press. I've actually decided that I will fill that tear or fill that gully, let's call it, gouge. Let's, we're going to fill that gouge with a little bit more JB weld. Now I've put masking tape either side of it to prevent uh, unnecessary sanding because it's on the seal face. I don't really want to be sanding that down any more than I have to. Otherwise it won't work as a seal face anymore and that will be the end of this motor. Although that's not a path I want to go down. The reason I'm doing it is because I've actually I've got to put the motor case in this angle to fix up this uh, piece of crank damage, crank case damage. I've, I've always seen this. I'm fed up with it. I, I mean, I don't know if it should have. It just looks to me like a piece is snapped off there. And so I've G clamped a little bit of cardboard, hold it in place. And I'm just going to make that, I don't know whether it should be like that, but that to me that's what is intended that, you know, let's have a look. This should carry on up there and the top one should come across. To me it looks like that's snapped off at one point. It's the next day and I'm not going to remove the masking tape. on this repair. Well, there's not a lot to see at the moment. The little ridge there. I found my P3000, P3000 which is it's very fine. I'm going to put that in the little jig that I made. And just try and take there is a there's a now a burr, a little lip. I might just take it off the side. I might just leave that lip there, you know. Just um or just take it off, make sure this side is nice and flush, because I don't want a little fragment like that breaking off and sticking in the oil line. But the seal will hold even if this came loose, the seal would hold it in until next time. Really happy with this. I've marked with a Sharpie where the repair was. And I haven't sanded it down or anything. It was a very... And I, I don't know whether this, is, this seal is deforming because of the ridge there. Anyway, it's light proof. Uh, the seal... I've left it, if anything, it's a little bit proud and a little bit uneven the way it went in because, I mean, it's it's in there and up here. So I've like put it in in a hurry. It's light proof. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to try and fix it any further because it's light proof. Happy days. Oh, uh, you know, so it's gone from you can see light in it to you cannot see light in it. I'll just put it up to the window, you know, so that you can you can also be the judge of that. There's absolutely light, there's nothing coming through there. And if you don't believe me. Well, anyway, like I say, the proof in the pudding will be like in the motor starting. Right, I think I dodged a bullet there. That really had me going, that did.